Hello, uh, welcome everyone. Welcome to the second night of Film Presentation Film Festival. Uh, my name is Nico Marzan, I'm the festival curator. And I'm delighted to present uh, tonight the UK premiere of Normal by Adele Tulli. Uh, Frame's representation, it's in its fourth year. Uh, we uh, will present 18 works until uh, next Saturday, 20th of April. And uh, as per previous years, we adopt a team uh, every year to uh, group together the works that we present, to present them uh, to stand as a whole, as a body of work. And this year, the team is deframing. Deframing as an ambition to uh, champion cinema that wants to embrace reality. Uh, as a as a flux, as something that constantly changes, uh, a cinema that uh, can help us to understand and challenge uh, idea of uh, standardization, uh, rigid categorization of cinematic languages, and it's a festival that looks at the aesthetics in relation to the politics. The film tonight, Normal by Adele Tulli, is a film that looks at uh, the political um, uh, concept of normality uh, within the gaze of Italian society, but goes way beyond Italian society, uh, question notions of gender, uh, notions of uh, uh, normality, and the way that we relate of our perception of normality. Um, Adele will be in conversation uh, after the screening with uh, Lily Houston, a new director of uh, Locarno Film Festival, and Dr. Amit Rai, uh, senior lecturer in New Media Communication at Queen Mary University in London. Uh, please help me to welcome Adele Tulli. Thank you. Thank you, Nico. Thanks, everyone, uh, first of all, that came uh, to the screening today. I won't say much before the screening uh, because we'll have a chance to chat after the screening. I just want to say that for me, being here tonight is... Um, um, it's, it's great, actually, because I've, I've lived in London uh, for quite a while, and this has always been my favorite cinema. <laughs> and, and this has always been my favorite festival. So to be uh, showing my own film here is an absolute honor. And, uh, and so I feel a bit emotional about that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I'm very happy, uh, very happy to screen the film in London here. So thanks uh, for inviting me and looking forward for the Q&A later. Hope you enjoy. Thank you. Please welcome Adele Tulli, the director, and Amit Aaron, right. Right, uh, who will uh, talk with us. So thank you to be here. And, and so I'm Lilian Stein, director of Locarno Film Festival. Um, I will uh, start with the first uh, question to Adele. Um, what was uh, the starting point of your project? Did you want to work on Normality, or did you want to work on, on gender? <laughs> <laughs> and how they differ. Um, I, the starting point was the PhD research, uh, and the idea was to try to articulate uh, a reflection through um, you know, the, the means of, uh, of film on, on gender normativity. So in a way, uh, it's kind of together, like w what it means, uh, normality, uh, through a, you know, uh, looking at gender through a, a, a normal, what, what is normal, uh, uh, in, you know, in, in gender roles. Uh, so that's the, like the very basic starting point before even I kind of knew what film I was gonna make was, try to use filmmaking as a way, as a language, to, to articulate a reflection, a critical reflection on, uh, on heteronormativity. Starting point. <laughs> and, uh, and then you started to look uh, for a situation that could illustrate uh, your, your And it was a long, it, it was a, um, the research was a kind of a long process because as a PhD, there was a lot of preliminary research uh, before I, conceived the film in this way I actually um, I actually uh, did a long um, long journeys actually through Italy uh, there is a when when discussing uh, you know gender and gender norms and, and uh, identity and sexuality issues in Italy there is a reference uh, that I think every uh, Italian uh, filmmaker has in mind that is Pasolini Comizzi d'amore, love meetings, in which uh, in the 60s I, uh, you know, went off through Italy asking Italians uh, 
questions about uh, uh, gender, sexuality, and, uh, and, um, and, uh, and so this was obviously the starting point, and somehow I, I, I went through um, long journeys using the car sharing platform, uh, blah, blah, car, you know, this, uh, <laughs> that you book online and you share a journey uh, with strangers. So the idea was to engage in long conversations with uh, random people, strangers, um, asking them, engaging in long dialogues uh, about, um, you know, every day, um, how gender, in, you know, how gender shape our identities in everyday life, from the moment we are born throughout our uh, life. So this, this was uh, sort of the starting point of the research, in a way, uh, kind of collecting many experiences and, and having these long dialogues with, with people over, uh, from north to south of you know, different backgrounds. And in, in, I didn't know I was going to make this film. And uh, at the, I recorded these conversations thinking maybe I would have used them uh, in the film. At the end, I didn't want to uh, use the interviews, but actually those conversations and dialogues were the very starting point for developing the ideas and for starting to think of uh, which scenes to select and how to go about uh, uh, the, the, you know, the, um, the, the selection of what uh, are the everyday moments uh, you know, of life from, from childhood through, through adolescence and adulthood in which we are kind of forced uh, or shaped into a gender identity. So that, that was uh, the, the, the beginning of the journey. But the very big difference between Pasolini's film and yours is that he's, uh, he's in, uh, actually interviewing people and it's uh, all uh, speeches about uh, every, uh, each one own representation and you choose to, to to illustrate it with uh, only very visual situations, and and also, if if we if we reference uh, to cinema or cin history of cinema, also some kind of slapstick, almost or very absurd, yeah, uh, physical situations. No, the the approach, uh, yes, uh, the Pasolini was the reference and the inspiration, but the approach was already different already at the stage of uh, of the interviews in the car, because Pasolini obviously in the 60s was uh, one, of, one of the very first experiments of Veris Verite Cinema in which he was going microphone in hand, um, you know, interviewing people in the street like a box pop approach that at the time wasn't um, common yet. And, um, and, and uh, even at the stage of uh, dialogues with people, I, um, I differed from, from that approach because I wanted to engage in long uh, dialogues in which we could mutually share our, our experiences. So it, it was, I, I didn't want to just you know, ask fast questions, uh, um, you know, like a sound bite in the street, but I wanted to engage in long um, journeys that allowed us very, you know, very intimate space in which we could have long dialogues in which I could uh, talk about myself as well. Like it was a very mutual sort of transformative process in a way, like some of the conversations were really, uh, brilliant. so uh, already at that stage, it was, uh, you know, uh, differing uh, uh, approach. But then when I decided not to include uh, any interview was also about the fact that I decided I, I wanted to make a film uh, that was in a, a sort of immersive experience, so um, in which nobody would become a protagonist. So that's why I didn't want voices or interviews, because I didn't want to focus on specific individuals' experiences. I wanted to focus on, on the system, uh, no? of the system of norms that, uh, that, uh, that is beyond <laughs> and above uh, us. And, and so uh, with interviews, with the single people experiences, I would have... Um, gone into a, a more like a conventional documentary approach of having characters discussing their own personal experiences here. The whole point of the film, even the fact that you see people but never, they never come back, all the scenes, you, you only see them you know, once and then they go, is, the intention is precisely not to focus on individuals, specific people, but on the system that keeps them together. That can be any of us somehow, that's the idea. And Amit, for you, how did you perceive this uh, system concept in the in the film when you? Um, well, I want to congratulate you on a really <laughs> successful film. I 
I mean, I think the audience's response was uh, also amazing in terms of the moments when you brought people to the, the point of laughter, but also there's a deep sense of a kind of, um, well, almost haunting, I felt. Um, there's a dream, dreamlike quality to many of the sequences, and part of it, I felt, was also the sound. The sound is a very important part of this film, and it, and it en enables us to have that immersive experience. Um, I was thinking about how the film is able to stage the commodification of the things that you're you're looking at, and so, uh, and for me, what it what it brought out is the importance of of looking at our attention, how we are perceiving things in ways that are normal. So, for me, would you talk a little bit about the sound and how you thought of the sound? Yeah, because as as I was saying at the end, the idea was to uh, try uh, to um, to make a film that would be more like a an immersive experience in in in. In, in what it what is this uh, you know germ, gender normativity that uh, um, shape and haunt haunt us so the feeling of haunting the, the claustrophobic feeling mm -hmm. of uh, of how norms uh, you know sh shape who we are and who we become was very much part of the idea the idea is to sort of uh, focus on what is supposed to be normal on you know normal 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 everyday life ordinary uh, situations that often go unquestioned because we get used to um, situations that are you know normal in the sense part of our everyday uh, life and and look at them through a gaze through a, you know using you know sound and using uh, also framing in a way that uh, all of a sudden they become unfamiliar all of a sudden they become uncanny uh, disquieting uh, so that we start looking at this normality f through another um, you know through another gaze all of a sudden through a gaze that is actually uh, questioning it so the idea is to question the reality that the film represents not just reproducing it uh, obviously there is a critical element in the film that wants to sort of uh, invite the audience to question what we see and to problematize it yeah and the use of sound sort to go back to that is very much part of that um, idea of creating a, a feeling of uh, abstraction no from this uh, uh, ordinary normal reality bring us bring us somewhere else and, and enable us to see it uh, from another point of view, from an uh, from a dis dis unfamiliar, disquieting point of view. So the sound, uh, uh, music, and sound design is very heavy in the film, but also help us to kind of, uh, you know, uh, go in, in, in an uh, in an abstract um, uh, place yeah. where we can sort of look at things uh, differently. Uh, I felt that it was uh, the case in the whole film because it's uh, often some kind of uh, entertaining music and kind of uh, light music, and it it gives it it uh, it enhances this uh, this feeling of uh, absurdity and distance. But um, I felt it was quite different for the last sequence because uh, you have this. Uh, kind of sound design referring somehow to thrillers or, or horror movies and it's as uh, a gay marriage and I wonder uh, I mean it's it's uh, it's uh, one moment in the film where you can film that music is somehow not a judgment but it's more uh, bringing you into a more precise uh, feeling or or way of thinking about the scene and uh, yeah, did, did, do you agree with that interpretation? And how did you how did you think about the music for these lessons? Because it's it's both it would be a progressive uh, ending and both a super normalized end uh, process. So how did you? Well. I'm glad that you interpreted it in this way because uh, somehow uh, it's, uh, I mean, precisely my intention to uh, end the film, uh, you know, with a, with a contradiction, with an open question. So the, the whole idea for me of the film is that it doesn't give answers, it is not didactic, it doesn't have any intention of being, you know, um, 
pedagogic or that or ideological, you know, is, is very open and, and, and invites the audience to question. And and again, the the, the ending uh, is is a further question for me, and it might be seen as a contradiction at the end of this kind of uh, you know super heteronormative paradigm, uh, but at the same time. You know, the the the, the, the my my end, but the, for me the question at the end is like, uh, are we uh, in the grip of norms even when we struggle against them, or uh, is there a chance in 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 uh, you know repeating the norm in in, uh, in in different ways? Is there a chance to subvert them? So it's sort of somewhere in between, and there is no answer. It's is 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 a is a way of further complicating the, the discussion about norm assimilations and uh, beyond the heterosexual framework. Uh, and, you know, uh, uh, yeah, F add another layer of, uh, of questioning it. Amit, what do you think about this? Um, I, well, I, I have a kind of another sort of question. We, we were talking earlier and I was, as I was experiencing the film and, um, the things that I've been sort of reading about Italy, we've been talking about uh, whiteness um, and the film being also a kind of um, sort of document of, of Italian middle class whiteness. And and you said something striking to me in, in our conversation. You, it's, it's a white. It's a it's a picture of uh, of Italy without difference. Yeah. And and how terrifying that is. Yeah. <laughs> A picture with Italian. Without, the, Without the, it, it's intentional. Basically, the idea is to omit any exceptions. Like try to look at mainstream society in its uh, purest form. How, how would it look like? The word without difference, without uh, you know, without the other, without any um, objects, you know, uh, in terms of race, obviously, and uh, in terms of uh, queerness, and in terms of any other deviation from the norm. And it's intentional because it looks terrifying. <laughs> I mean, that's the, the 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 intention is to kind of provoke that feeling of disquietness of uh, of. Um, Anxiety of uncanniness of uh, of claustrophobia uh, of horror, <laughs> actually. Um, but it's not. I mean, at the same. So the, yeah. So there is that uh, that is very intentional. So that's a sort of uh, epuration uh, from the, of, of diversity and uh, to to create that feeling. And at the same time, uh, for me, what is important in the film is that uh, it doesn't intend to. Um, to, to, to portray a picture uh, and and to to have it there, um, you know, from a complete uh, with a complete distancing effect. I mean, throughout the film, what I try to do uh, is to oscillate uh, between uh, proximity and distance, you know, between identification and alienation. Uh, there are moments in which I want uh, us uh, to connect. Uh, and identify uh, with the emotions uh, because nobody lives in a social vacuum. So I think everybody, in a way or another, can uh, feel, uh, you know, can 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 kind of connect to to those kind of norms that have been part of our lives in a way or another. No, so I think that feeling of connection it helps us also to be able to question it because if it was just uh, a full-on, you know, distancing effect we probably would not be able to challenge ourselves in watching it. I mean, at least my intention, obviously, that's the intention, and then you never know if, <laughs> if you succeed with intention, but the intention is to be in that liminal space between, between distance and critical distance so that you can all of a sudden see your uh, everyday, everyday reality through a perspective that is uh, challenging, but at the same time, feel it sometime, you know? So with the girl piercing you, you feel you're with her with their desire of pleasing, of being part of that ritual. So that uh, distance and proximity for me is very important because the, what I'm looking for is not just to, you know, look at that uh, horrifying uh, normativity. No, it's more like how, how we are all part of it. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I mean, well, <laughs> I mean, I was thinking about uh, the question of complicity. 
Yeah. I mean, I think what what the the sort of gaze that you have constructed in the film as a counter gaze, it's a it's a it's a oppositional gaze, it's a resistant gaze, but it's also a gaze that uh, asks us an ethical question. The ethical question is, what is your complicity in this? And I think that's a it's a great accomplishment. I think of the film itself. So. Thank it's you. Just I a mean, comment. Sorry. <laughs> no, no. Thank you. I mean the. Yeah. It's very much the, very much the intention, and it's not just um, an accusation. It's also, if you want, uh, um, what's the opposite in English of accusation? Uh, to be uh, exonerated. Exoneration, yeah. bravo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's normal to desire to be normal yeah. because that's what yeah. we learn. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so it's, uh, it's, uh, it's part of the perverse game. But I wouldn't choose uh, the word complicity because the word complicity is is uh, is linked to the word accusation. For me, it's more a, s a way of self-questioning, mm -hmm. more than how it's not that we're com com it's not complicity in sense of we 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 would arm society being wanting to be normal, but more. We're harming ourselves and our children, and and uh, and over and over again. So it's more like how you can self-question. No, no, but that's why if I, I, I'm saying it's uh, for me at the end is a film about desire, like exploring what it, what what is it, you know, what, what, where this desire comes from, and there is no accusation. No, nobody's accused. Nobody's no, scrutinized that's it, in, that's a, in it. an accusation is in an accusatory form. Like the the fact that the desire is so. Uh, uh, you know, embedded in a system. And it's very interesting to, because the desire you're, you're talking about is also very connected to the desire, uh, sexual desire for and from the other, because it's all related to gender representation, so. Yeah, so that's why the, somehow the, the film has this sort of loose narrative that starts from childhood and uh, you know we see how you know gender is shaped uh, and then gradually when we are approach adolescence we start to see how uh, the interaction with the other gender uh, also uh, starts to play its uh, performative uh, um, you know, element and and encounters with the other sex. So the sexuality comes into, you know, at the at the party scene in which there is that kind of uh, seduction, uh, performative seduction sort of uh, uh, dance, and then and then it becomes, you know, uh, more and more uh, married. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the final accomplishment of the project. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's uh, that was one of my questions. How did you choose? Uh, yeah, the editing. So it's it's kind of yeah. The editing was a nightmare. I mean, it's a <laughs> film that is so loose and there is no clear narrative. And uh, actually, I also tried to uh, to break this uh, thin uh, narrative of the of the of the growing up of the individual. In the beginning, I was trying to kind of, I mean, the process is very uh, idiosyncratic and personal, like it's a web of connections of, of elements that are uh, obviously very subjective and very personal. I tried to break even that, uh, you know, uh, uh, that type of, that narrative in the beginning, but then it would be too loose and, and I couldn't follow it myself. So I, I kind of <laughs> went back to at least have that idea of uh, following uh, the growth uh, of an individual, which at the end makes sense for me because though it's a bit literal, but at the same time, it kind of gets, you know, uh, you, know you, you get the point <laughs> of, uh, of uh, how, how systemic it, it is. So that was at least a, a line to follow in the edit. And, uh, and all the other were, uh, were, were really, I say, idiosyncratic personal connections in the sense that there is a lot of, uh, a lot of elements that recur for me, for example, the idea of um, a trainer that uh, somehow, you know, there is very little dialogue in the film, but uh, the only time you see people speaking, they're not uh, talking about, you know, themselves or something specific to themselves, but they are training, you know, so there is a sort of voice of, uh, voice of the system, voice of God, that there is uh, somehow reproducing certain 
uh, giving some instructions about things how to get, you know, it, it can be a priest or a gym uh, instructor, but somehow this idea of training and um, and the gestures as well. I mean, it's a film about bodies a lot as well. So, you know, synchronized movement, mass movement, uh, the idea of, uh, of uh, you know, mu moving in, in unison and, and so, sort of keep suggesting this idea of, you know, norm and conformity. So all these uh, elements that uh, are somehow scattered around through the scenes, I'm, I'm, I'm trying in the edit to kind of bring them together and, and make, uh, make them uh, work, at least as a web of connections for me. And sometimes uh, oh, the audience comes back to me, uh, you know, uh, uh, feeling like they've, they've, they've seen this connection. Sometimes they feel their own, I mean, they find their own connections, which is the best thing because I mean it, it, the film is open and it's meant to be open so the idea is that everybody can find their own uh, web of uh, ideas in it as well so it does say uh, somebody wants to ask so, so just wait for the microphone thank you um, thank you very much first of all congratulations for the great film um, I have one question, a quite conceptual question, and which is, we, this is a quite wholesome, comprehensive film. We see homosexuality, heterosexuality, men, women. One aspect of gender, um, the gender issue, gender argument that seems, seems to be overlooked is the trans, um, trans argument or the trans section. Um, except for one scene, which I'm not sure if you intended it to be a commentary on the trans argument or it looks like it. So please do let me know and also let us know if you have, you've heard anything from the trans community. And that is the magician scene. I wonder if uh, that was intentionally uh, a commentary on the trans argument or not. Um, thanks for the question. Um, it's not, for me, the magician has a lot of meanings, and um, some of them probably are just uh, my own trip. But, <laughs> but uh, for me, it's not a straightforward comment on, on the, on the trans, uh, transsexual argument on trans issues. And in general, to take it, I mean, as a general question, uh, there is no, specific, uh, you know, uh, to, you know it's, there is no discussion about the trans uh, element as much as there is no discussion about the, you know, uh, other uh, races elements for the reasons I said before, because uh, I'm, I'm trying to portray um, a word, a, a very normative word, so obviously everything that is supposed to be the exception to that norm is intentionally left out of the film because of that. But uh, in that scene, the, 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 the trick, the intentional trick, that, 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 that there was an intention there is that in the beginning of it, obviously, all of a sudden, the gender uh, dynamic is reversed. So uh, that's there to make you question it. That's there to uh, sort of notice that, you know, like, uh, why all of a sudden is a man in front of a mirror being, putting makeup on? That's not normal. Like you know, like the, the, it's there to 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 make you question the norm through uh, reversing it. But as soon as it's uh, as soon as uh, you're reversing this, uh, you actually realize that is pampered, that is uh, uh, that is being uh, taken care of, and that is being is going to be at the center of stage, uh, completely in charge, uh, dissecting a woman. So eventually, uh, it's just reproducing that norm. So it's 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 somehow there to challenge, um, to challenge those uh, those ideas and to reinstate them a minute after. And then it's also a comment about what is real, what is artificial. But let's not get into that. <laughs> Thanks for the film. Um, just a question about um, sort of the gaze and the, I don't know if I should say the third eye. Um, how did you go about that in a sense? How did you do that? Um, the idea that at all times it felt as if 
the camera was literally at the back of the, you know, the kind of the, the, the um, audience. And, and we were sitting right there in the frame almost. And then everything else was happening at in the other layers. How did you achieve that? I mean, I'm assuming, I mean, I have my ideas, but I'm curious to hear how you went about doing that. Yeah, thank you. Well, uh, I think in general, when I knew uh, a little bit of the approach I was going to take in the film, uh, I knew that uh, uh, shoot, I mean, the framing and composition was going to be very important, at least to keep it together, because already there is no narrative, there is no protagonist, you know, so the idea of, uh, you know, having, you know, exploring ideas through, uh, not through words, not through interviews, not through protagonists, but through the means itself of filmmaking, so through uh, composition, framing, and then eventually editing and, and sound. It was all somehow intentional from the beginning to, to try to uh, project uh, the intention, the, the, the very you know, inspiration uh, from the beginning, which was uh, looking at the ordinary reality through an uncanny gaze, uh, a questioning gaze, eventually my own gaze, uh, which would all of a sudden question its uh, ordinariness. And, uh, and so, uh, you know, uh, the idea of uh, being uh, hypersymmetrical at times, unnatural, you know, like the idea is to use documentary in a very undocumentary <laughs> way, like to, to challenge the idea that documentary represents reality. I mean, the idea for me is to challenge reality, not represent reality. So to use it to, uh, to, make it as, to make it look as unnatural and unrealistic and, uh, uh, you know, as possible in a way. So this, uh, uh, you know, super constructed look, almost artificial, uh, ultra symmetrical, and when it wasn't possible, because obviously it's still, it's still un unstaged and it's still, you know, um, when it's not possible, it, it, it comes through sound maybe because the, uh, so the feeling is always looking for that element. But uh, when, I, for example, in the scene of the, of the gym uh, class at the park, that was a, some, somehow challenging because this is actually happening and there are like 60, 70, whatever, I don't know, no, many, 30, I don't know, many of them uh, in the park and they're doing their class and it's only one hour and, uh, and, uh, and they're going you know, everywhere and we are two and, we, and if I follow them and I follow the action like often it happens in documentaries, you follow the action uh, handheld and I'm not gonna see that scene in that uh, ab absurd way. So throughout that, I'm just looking for two or three um, frames to actually just see that even, you know, so it, the whole class, the whole hour, we actually spent looking for, you know, I, I went there with a mini crane trying to, you know, look it from another perspective. And it was difficult because it was, you know, uh, happening and they were going as uh, we were mounting the crane and they were already gone, you know, like, so sometimes it wasn't possible. Sometimes uh, it happens. Uh, I think we have time for our last question. Sorry. Maybe two. Uh, it's okay? Well, I, I have signs. <laughs> Maybe one and the next we can do outside. Well, was congratulations. Uh, it was very touching also because um, I kind of escaped uh, a similar uh, place in, in Italy. So <laughs> I do see the same thing and over and over, just went back like a, a week ago. So it, was, it was very touching. And um, I wanted, I've seen the, um, it's been shown in, uh, in Berlin as well. Uh, and I don't know where, where else it has been shown, but I was wondering how uh, you think it has been perceived in different cultures and seeing how a very clinical uh, and introspective, actually, in a sense, uh, portrait of Italy right now has been seen and perceived. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so far it's been screened, uh, it's not as, it's, it has not 
to be screened in Italy yet, and it's, it will uh, uh, be released in May, so that's going to be interesting. Uh, <laughs> but uh, but uh, I, but we screened it in in um, in Germany and in uh, Denmark. Um, so it was interesting because, in fact. Uh, uh, it's a very Italian film, uh, but at the same time, for me, uh, I, I, I have the. F I mean, I've, I've lived abroad a lot, and uh, and uh, and I think, uh, despite the fact that obviously every place has its own cultural dynamics, and you know, um, and the, in this sense, this is obviously a very Italian film, and and uh, and I'm and I decided to to make it in Italy because I'm Italian myself, and I can. I feel like I, I can negotiate those social, you know, social dynamics, and and they were part of my, <laughs> you know, upbringing as well. Uh, but at the same time, I feel like uh, obviously, you know, gender binary and and the norms surrounded uh, uh, surrounded the, the, the gender um, are are everywhere as far as I'm. No, I mean, I've been everywhere, but <laughs> most places have been. And, uh, and obviously they, they can uh, be, um, you know, can they, they, they can express in different ways, but there are norms uh, related to gender everywhere. And so in, in a way or another, the film is not uh, is specific about Italy, but at the same time, it really investigates the idea of norm and how, it, and how they shape uh, us. So I think even... Um, Eventually, so far, people have come back to me saying that they felt a lot of connections, and uh, and not with everything. And I think in, in you know even Italians themselves don't connect to everything. Like I I, I think the, the, there is one particular scene that I wasn't even sure of uh, of putting in the film because it's it's extreme uh, in a way. Also in uh, you know like the scene of the wedding uh, etiquette class in which the, 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 the women are being explained how to serve their husbands. Uh, it's not necessarily, you know, um, average uh, also in Italy, but at the same time for me it was important to have it there also in contrast with the following scene that is the hand party scene that is supposed to be the modern uh, Sex and the City type of uh, version, like uh, what, you know, more American tradition than Italian, in fact. And so those two scenes, in contrast, for me, work because they are somehow the two faces of the same coin, no? in a way. So, in any case, to cut the short <laughs> the story short, uh, I, I think uh, there there are um, parameters uh, that uh, that can connect that that can uh, that can make the film, you know, um, beyond Italian boundaries, because I think it investigates the system of norms, and somehow this is present everywhere. Last question. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I was just uh, as a marginalised audience member, uh, I feel I was being invited to extend uh, compassion. Yet there was an element of uh, discomfort that I felt with uh, the kind of self mockery uh, that can occur when when there is a sense of discomfort with the material. Uh, could you say something about that? Can you expand a bit So um, you've intentionally not included, but in terms of your audience, uh, your audience includes those on the margins uh, that don't necessarily connect with the material. Yes, indeed. So then what am I meant to, how am I meant to experience that material? And what I got was I'm um, being invited to extend compassion However, I did also experience uh, self-mockery from the audience, so then, you know, well, there's me, an element I think the invitation, in processing the yeah, material. No, I see what you mean. It's a very interesting point. I think for me the invitation is to, is to uh, feel the cla the, the, how claustrophobic uh, is a uh, normative word you know, uh, and, uh, and, and the word according to norms, that uh, for the bodies and for the subjectivities that are in the margins uh, is, a, is a probably an everyday perspective. Like, uh, is the same perspective that makes you walk in a room uh, full of white people, or is the same perspective that, that you, as a queer 
person, uh, you know, uh, and when you enter a space. So how uncomfortable and, uh, and claustrophobic and haunting and uh, difficult and, um, you know, problematic is the word of norms. Uh, that's what I wanted, that's the feeling I wanted to reproduce through the film. Uh, so I think uh, eventually maybe this is a more familiar feeling to most people in the margins, like uh, uh, the feeling of, uh, of looking at it through this, uh, through this gaze. But the, the, the gaze that I wanted to sort of reproduce through the film is precisely that. It's like uh, it's a very uncomfortable feeling and, and, and problematizing that what is considered normative and normal and, 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 and we don't even question it, is very problematic. Yeah, and also it's, it's uh, in fact extremely interesting what you're saying, but maybe uh, another kind of answer would be uh, that uh, norm is supposed to help us and make us feel good in the society. And you can see there how, how suffering it, it, it makes. So this could be a way for Mar Martin's audience maybe to to connect with uh, the, the, the questions of the film or yeah I think it's 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 uh, a way of uh, of making the oppression that is often invisible a bit more visible I mean I, I just want to say that it made me feel kind of schizophrenic and I, and I think that it really invites that sort of sort of experience of th that w what normality is actually pushing us toward is a kind of schizophrenia. Um, anyways, yeah. I like this ending. Uh, what? <laughs>